Welcome to Movie Complex. If this is your first time here, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the latest Quibi Show reviews. Now let's get into the review. No, 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 no. You can't tell mom what I'm about to tell you. I crashed my car, man. Really? I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. Come pick me up. I will be there. Would you please talk to me for one minute? Why haven't you left yet, man? 45 minutes away, okay? I will freeze to death if you don't come pick me up. Andy, where are you? You're watching this right now. It means that I never made it out of here. It's 25 miles. Wow. I can't believe I was going to write this movie off until I uncovered something really interesting that I had missed. So, about wireless. Please make sure that you read the captions that Quibi has in place before the video starts so you can get the maximum out of your viewing experience. Yeah, the only reason I know this is because the first time I watched Wireless, I fluffed through Quibi's captions thinking they were talking about the turnstile viewing mode where you can flip your phone portrait or landscape to view it. Yep, fluffed through that and watched Wireless and had the worst viewing experience imaginable. I felt really frustrated after first watching Wireless because I felt like I was missing big chunks of the story not being able to see what the main character was looking at on his phone. It wasn't until later on in the day I went through some of the episodes and read some captions and then I discovered, well damn, I did miss some big chunks of the story. So then I went back to the very first episode saw the captions and I was like oh so then I watched the episode again and I flipped the phone portrait mode when he was typing and I could see exactly what he was looking at and exactly what he was typing and I was like damn Quibi that is so dope but then I realized I had to go back through all 10 episodes and watch them again with the correct viewing experience so that I can give you the best possible review. Now that we got my technological issue out of the way, I'm going to jump right into the review. Wireless is a survival thriller about a college student who gets stranded in the Colorado mountains. The only tool in his survival kit is the one he spent his whole life learning how to use, his smartphone. Wireless was written, directed, and executive produced by Zach Wechter. And among the other list of executive producers, one name stands out, and that's Steven Soderbergh. If you don't know who that is, I'll give you a few of his greatest hits. Those include Traffic, Contagion, Aaron Brockovich, and the Oceans Trilogy. Back to Zach Wechter. I feel like he did a great job visually telling the story. It had a nice indie feel to it with great composition and lighting. He also did a great job utilizing this new technology, but I did a little digging and found out that he had some practice. Zach had previously directed a 17 minute short called Pocket, which utilizes a similar but different technology than the one used on Quibi. Star of Pocket, Mace Coronel, also stars as Lionel, the main character's younger brother. He also brought over Pocket producer Michael Glass to help produce Wireless. On to the viewing experience. I feel like the first episode built up a lot of great tension. The phone conversation he was having while driving kept my stomach in knots. I'm all like, dude, keep your eyes on the road. I half expected the accident to happen in the first episode. And no, that's not a spoiler because we already know from the trailer and the synopsis that he's gonna get into an accident. The director and the cinematographer gave us lots of close-ups of the main character's face and I feel like that was used to draw us into what the character was doing and feel closer to the main character. The second episode is going to totally throw you for a loop. I watched it on a different day and was feeling total deja vu. I thought I was watching the same episode twice until I backed out and went back in and kept watching and I was like, oh, this is a completely different episode. Our main character, Andy, is riddled with flaws. Habitual lying, alcoholism, theft, and asking people to commit crimes. All those flaws wrapped into one give us this troubled and sympathetic character. Ty Sheridan did a great acting job. He showed us great moments of vulnerability, desperation, and anger, and it was really fun to watch him perform. I think there were some really good themes about grief and addiction. The director and the writers did a great job conveying those themes throughout the story. Andy had two addictions. One, of course, was alcohol, and the other was his phone. I don't think he put down that phone for more than 10 seconds the entire film. The alcohol abuse stems from the loss of his father, but I feel like the writers and the director were trying to tell us that others in his family may also be suffering from addictions. 
His father had one to cigarettes, which led to his eventual death from lung cancer. And through phone conversations, we learned that Andy's brother Lionel may also be addicted to vaping. Okay, so taking the cell phone out of the equation, which I feel like it's 50% of the reason that Andy got into the accident, but let's focus on the other 50%, which is the alcohol. I feel like the alcohol is what got him into the situation and the accident is Andy's survival intervention. It is then in your darkest hour and your moment of desperation that you're able to look within yourself and see what needs to change or if you even have the grit to get out of that situation. I love how this film gives us a bird's eye view of Andy's intervention, which makes him a really sympathetic character and his struggle really personal and relatable and it makes the audience secretly root for him. Now, I may be reaching a little bit, but I feel like another small theme of the film is you, you know, that saying you are who you hang around. And I feel like Andy exhibited some pretty horrible behavior in the beginning of the film, but his friends were probably just as bad. One in particular, Jake, you know, seemed really unsympathetic and uh, showed a tough love attitude to Andy during his time of need. And I felt like when a person's going through a tough situation like that you need to pull back on the tough love help them get through the situation and then afterwards help them get help but he didn't do that he was just all you got yourself into it you get yourself out of it my gosh this movie has it all it's relatable it's personal it talks about real issues it's innovative it's engaging and that's why i give this movie a 10 out of 10. I am really in shock and awe at this show. Quibi has stumbled onto some amazing technology that allows filmmakers to tell a story in an innovative and modern way. The viewer doesn't just have to watch things the first time through. They can go back a second and a third time and get two totally different viewing experiences. And this technology is exclusive to Quibi. If they market this the right way, this can be a total win-win for this platform. Now, keep them coming, and don't do it the same way twice, or can you? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified on new content. When do I post new content? Every Saturday. Next Saturday, I'll be reviewing the documentary, Sex Next Door. See you Saturday. This is Movie Complex, your place for bite-sized reviews.